According to Hubble's law, the universe is constantly expanding. So are our curiosities, full of questions and answered, like what lies beneath the deepest part of the ocean, or how do we even know we exist, right? That sort of question that no one knows the answer to. Now, let us feed your curiosities with some questions you thought you could not ask. Still, it would be best to hear about the evolution of transmission of information between 1946 and 1972 in different areas of the world that help, shape, and benefit our present and future. Ideally, in today's time, solving is done at lightning speed. In just a touch of a button, you could solve almost every mathematical problem because of the advancement of our gadgets. Let's look back in 1946 on how a single computer developed by Moshley and Eckert laid the foundations for the modern electronic computing industry. The need for enhanced computational speed emerged as technology advanced in the early and mid-1900s. As a result, the U.S. military spent half a million dollars developing the ideal computer machine. In 1946, Moshley and Eckert developed the Electrical Numerical Integrator and Computer, or the ENIAC. The American military sponsored this research because it needed a computer for calculating artillery firing tables and a setting used for different weapons under varied conditions for target accuracy. The ENIAC could turn 5,000 addition problems in one second, far faster than any device invented at that time. Well, in addition to that, Let's jump to 1948, where the publication of Claude Shannon's A Mathematical Theory of Communication. It was created to find practical ways to make better, more efficient codes and find the limits on how fast computers could process digital signals. In a given set of possible events, the information contained in a message describing one of these occurrences quantifies the symbols required to encode the event in the most efficient manner. His hypothesis is based on a simple yet powerful communication model, a transmitter that encodes data into a signal which is subsequently distorted by noise and encoded by the receiver. Wow! The advent of the integrated circuit revolutionized the electronics industry and paved the way for devices and many appliances found around the home. But the evolution of technology does not stop here. During 1957, planar transistors were invented by Gene Horney. So Horney developed the planar transistor process to um, solve the reliability problems of the method transistor. The design of the planar transistor involved on earlier designs by making them cheaper to make mass producible and better at amplifying electrical, electrical input. So this increases the amount of time and subsequently money needed to produce transistors and has helped pave the way for more affordable electronics. So on September 12, 1958, Jack Calby, a TI engineer who took part along with Robert Noyce of Fairchild in the realization of the first integrated circuit while working at Texas Instruments in 1958. An integrated circuit is a small electronic device made out of a semiconductor. Shortly after Calby's arrival at Texas instrument, he has his epoch-making monolithic idea. Calby realized that instead of connecting separate components, an entire electronic assembly could be made as one unit from semiconducting materials by overlaying it with various impurities to replicate individual electronic components such as resistors, capacitors, and transistors. In two years, people made and helped develop two amazing inventions to benefit in this very day and allow us to enjoy the things they have built for us. It is astonishing that various inventions that are introduced to the public that made our lives easier. Did you know that there is an operating system that could handle multitasking? And that is the Unix operating system. So today, let's go interview a student from Norso if they are familiar with this invention. Hello, this is Rickson Raytan, a civil engineering student of Negros Oriental State University and it's a great privilege for me to be here today. 
The word Unix or UNIX is not new to me since I've encountered such word before. Well, Unix is a computer operating system. And if I'm not mistaken, it was invented in the late 1990s, I think. And it's a multi-user, multitasking operating system. Multiple users may have multiple tasks running simultaneously. This is very different from PC operating systems such as MSDOS and MS Windows, which means that it is an independent operating system. Yes, that's right. Though, actually, the Unix operating system was invented in 1969, not in the 1990s. And it was developed by Ken Thompson. That was the invention that still exists now, but hardly remembered by most. Enough of that. After talking about the computer operating system, let's talk about the world's first CPU, released in March 1971 by Intel, for which today is one of the main contributors of CPUs around the world. Good day everyone, I'm Professor Eliana A. Thanai, and today we got to talk about the Intel 4004. So the Intel 4004 was the world's first microprocessor a complete general purpose CPU and a single chip. So it was released in March 1971 and using cutting edge silicon gate technology, the 4004 marked the beginning of Intel's rise to global dominance in the processor industry. So this revolutionary microprocessor, the size of a little fingernail, delivered the same computing power as the first electronic computer built in 1946, which filled an entire room. So the Intel 4004 became the first general purpose programmable processor on the market, a building block that engineers could purchase and then customize with separate to perform different functions in a wide variety of electronic devices. Have you ever watched a movie on DVDs? If yes, then you'll be amazed that before DVD was made, there was Laserdisc. Well, hello there. I am Tristan Mamis, 36 years old, and I've been collecting discs ever since I was 20. So let me share a little knowledge about Laserdisc. The first Laserdisc was produced and published by the MCA in the Philips Corporation. MCA or the Music Corporation of America. Compared to the earlier Betamax and VHS videotape formats, Laserdisc offers superior image and sound. But due to its high price and lack of recording ability, they were not successful in the market. So, it is still rare to see and collect laser discs around 1970s until the present. That was a fantastic ride of information we've explored, right? A long ride from the development of a computer down to the development of laser disc. Every progress in history is essential, for which it was a stepping stone for the future. Without this, we couldn't even be advanced now. Gadgets wouldn't even exist. Communication wouldn't even be a thing. But thanks to our genius people who made our present beneficial. Everything we enjoy now is the product of our past and it takes one or two people to make history.